Yes, people, what's going on? Welcome to Stretford Paddock. I am Adam McCullough here for your daily news. Hope you guys are all doing well. If you're anything like me, you're still a little bit gutted from the Atletico Madrid game. Even though we know this isn't a great Manchester United team at the moment, you still have hopes we can beat Atletico Madrid, go through to the next round of the Champions League and somehow salvage something in our season, especially when you look at some of the individuals that we have within this team and within this squad. Unfortunately, it wasn't meant to be and we're dealing with the fallout from that game still till this day. So we'll be here with some of that news. Make sure you're subscribing, liking, commenting and sharing to Stretford Paddock as well. Um, help us hit 700k or whatever the next target is as well by hitting that subscribe button. We know that most of you are already subscribed, but some of you watch the videos without subscribing. Now, we love that you get involved in the content. We love that you watch. But if you can, do us a favour and hit that subscribe button. Anyway, let's get stuck into our first piece of news today. It come from The Telegraph. It come from um, Docca and McGrath, uh, Mike McGrath. MUFC's search for a new manager is expected to gather pace over the next few weeks with the credentials of Eric Ten Hag and Mauricio Pochettino said to be dividing opinion among staff. Now, those are two great choices for the next Manchester United manager in my opinion. I'm a fan of both of theirs. Um, everyone's heard me speak about Poch in the past and I like what Ten Hag has done at Ajax. Now, you'd expect Manchester United's search to gather pace regardless of what happened in the Champions League. So if that is true, then that is a little bit worrying. What were you doing? Waiting for Ralph Ragnick to prove himself. Remember the plan, stick to the plan. You know, Ralph Ragnick's supposed to be going in upstairs and we're out here possibly thinking whether to make him permanent. It's not what you want to be hearing, if that's true, of course. Um, and MUFC search now is gathering pace. Look, we've got nine games left of the season. The season is done. Look, fighting for top four, that isn't where Manchester United need to be. And we're probably not going to get it anyway. We need to start looking ahead and see how we're going to right the wrongs that are at the club at the moment. That starts with making transfers. That starts with all those kind of things. So how can you get working on that without your next manager in place? Man United need to start moving fast. I actually knocked out of the Champions League, so they've just got their domestic campaign to think of. Pochettino's PSG knocked out of the Champions League. They've just got their campaign to think of domestically and they've pretty much won the league. So United, I'm sure, can start rocking a few bolts and finding out who's what and who wants to come to the Manchester United. Because neither of these do, then we need to move on and start looking elsewhere, don't we? Um, and the shortlist might have other number, names on it. You've heard about links to Thomas Tuchel. I like him, fan of what he's done at Chelsea. Could be another possibility if things worsen um, there at Stamford Bridge, but let's have a look anyway. Um, we also had yesterday Marcus Rashford denying making a rude gesture to Man United fan following defeat by Atletico Madrid. He admits the emotion got the better of him as he was heckled as he walked from outside the ground. Now there was talk that he had offered a Man United fan out and stuck his middle finger up at him, which then became, I told the Man United fan to come and say it to my face while using that finger to... Look, it's all a nonsense. Um, first of all, I know Marcus Rashford's only human and all that kind of thing. He shouldn't be reacting to his own fans. But I also know it's a human reaction, do you know what I mean? I can't really blame him for it. If there's fans outside of the ground, especially when you've just lost, you're leaving your home ground, it's not an away ground, You've got your own fans giving you some. Recording it as well, hoping for a reaction. I don't know, it just stinks a little bit to me. No, I'm not a fan of some Man United players currently. Um, but I wouldn't be looking to give them abuse in the streets. And I definitely wouldn't be looking to give them abuse outside Old Trafford. And like, we know most of the people queued up there probably weren't get involved in that. And we know the people giving abuse would probably crumble for a selfie if Rashford was in five feet of them. So, I do find it all a little bit unnecessary, to be honest. But, again, like, Rashford should just, why reply? Just, you've had a human response to people giving you grief. People can understand, and it just feels like PR statement after PR statement. And with everyone involved at Man United, and I can see why people just go, oh, another one. Um, but, yeah, this is where we're at at the minute. And then we hear, as well, within that article in the Telegraph, uh, that Marcus Rashford is believed to have travelled overseas for a short break to recharge his batteries and clear his head with the United squad given the rest of the week off. 
We've got nine games left of the season to salvage something domestically, which again, I mean, we shouldn't be fighting for top four this season. So, you know, where does that lie? The season's more or less done, but we do need to salvage something. Sending the players away to clear their mind, recharge their batteries. I'm all for that, man. We've got a long time now to our next game. Um, some of these players are probably going to be dropped by their international teams as well. Marcus Rashford included, possibly. Although, we do know Gareth Southgate likes him and we've we've seen some of his decisions in the past kind of stick to what he's known in the, in, in the past as well. So, it remains to be seen, but look, go get a rest. Go clear your head, come back and let's see what we can do. We're going to have to win most of our last nine games to have a hope of of finishing the fourth and, and getting Champions League football next season, which is still important, but the prospect of Europa League and Europa Conference League, oh, I'd just rather not be in Europe at all. Jeez. Also yesterday, the fallout from this defeat just seems to get worse, doesn't it? Um, United midfielder Pogba reveals there was a burglary at his home. Um, he posted, our family's worst nightmare was realized when our home was broken into while our babies were sleeping in their bedroom. The family's nanny was at home at the time. Pogba and his wife uh, were at Old Trafford for the game and they rushed home as soon as they heard. It's not, you know, we've seen a pattern of these kind of things um, with footballers, um, you know, being, you know, having their homes burgled when, when they're at games and all those kind of things. I think Reese James, it's happened to recently. And I can think of other players as well. It's not nice and, you know, from personal experience in the past where my house has been broken into, you kind of just hate your house a little bit after because it just feels a bit wrong and that. And I can't imagine that then with having young children and stuff. So obviously, hopefully Pogba and his family are all good. But this isn't the kind of thing you want to hear. Um, look, I think Pogba's probably going to leave anyway um, at the end of the season. But this kind of thing probably just reinforces that a little bit. Although, look, it can happen anywhere, do you know what I mean? But we saw how it can affect players um, and the, their feeling or their sense of security. Um, but yeah, I don't I don't think it'll impact that really, but I didn't think it's off anyway, but you know, it could add to another one of those things. As well as United just being poor, things not really going right for him here, for whoever's fault that is. Um, but yeah. Anyway, that's pretty much the news today. A little bit of a depressing one, isn't it? Um, and then yesterday, Liverpool beat Arsenal, which you think, well, that's good. That helps us out. But then Liverpool now could be winning the league. Oh, I just feel sick of football. Guys, thank you for tuning in. Make sure you like, comment, sharing and subscribing. Uh, see you later.